10 footer is in. A big time bucket from Dane Goodwin. Pump fakes now, he's going to drive down the lane, up to the rim, and lays it home. Great move by Leshesky. Feet ahead, moving, catches, fakes it in, and one. Over to Starling, 12 to shoot. Oh, he gets the corner. Dribbles towards the middle, crossover, step back, 25. Footer is pure. Oh, Trey Wirtz. Now he picks up the dribble, over to Goodwin, back to Ryan. Oh, he wants another one. Give it to him! All day, baby! All night! Cormac Ryan is unconscious! He's got flames coming out of his hands! Welcome to this week's edition of the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com. I'm your host, Tony Simeone, joined as always by the head coach, Mike Bray. Coach, didn't go your way this week. Thought you played a really close game at home against Carolina, then shorthanded down to Winston-Salem to come up short. Just what was your takeaway from another hard-fought week, but no wins? You know, I, I have a lot of respect for our guys mm -hmm. because we keep coming to work and keep giving ourselves a chance, and we're in there in game situations, but we have not been able to get over the hump. So... I'm heartbroken for them, but we're going to keep their heads up and keep working and see if we can generate some momentum before we head to Greensboro. Let's talk about this upcoming week because you have Senior Day coming up. And as you said, it's a senior group that's very veteran. This season has not gone the way they want it to go, but they've had great careers. So what are you looking forward to to Wednesday when you get a chance to honor a lot of guys that deserve it? Well, some of them won't go out again because we did it last year, but a Marcus Hammond and our senior managers, we do want to actually honor. But, but you know, that group of young men have been great ambassadors mm -hmm. and class acts and representatives of our program, and they got us two NCAA tournament wins last year. Mm -hmm. um, great students. We've got six of them getting master's degrees. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of them. It, it's an honor to be around them all the time. I know they're heartbroken a lot of nights, and, and my job is to keep telling them to move forward and get their heads up and use this as a teaching moment. Look back at the trials and turbulations of your fifth year, your senior year, and understand life's, that's life, brother. <laughs> Coach, appreciate it. We'll step aside and come back with more on the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com, right after this. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com. It's now time for this week's Game Breakdown. Coach, let's start with North Carolina. I think back to last week, you're coming off just one of the toughest weeks you've had in the sense that you go to Duke, you go to Virginia. I thought you could have won both games. You didn't, but you guys were right in both. I thought you played some of your best basketball over the last week. You come into this game against North Carolina knowing you're going to get a tough test against a team that beat you in Chapel Hill. What was the message going into this game? Well, you're trying to give your guys confidence that even though you didn't win in Durham or Charlottesville, that you played good teams right to the wire and that you had beaten North Carolina the two previous times here in South Bend. And we were very ready to play, and I thought we defended excellently to start the game. Um, and then it comes down to a possession under a minute, and we can't quite close it defensively, which has kind of been a problem for us. I want to talk about that great defensive start because as I was watching the game, I'm thinking about the offense. You guys didn't score for almost six minutes, and I'm like, what's going on here? But then I look up, and the fact that you're still within a point when you score your first basket six minutes into the game, to me, told me you guys are defending really well. In fact, 5 of 27. When you hold Carolina to 5 of 27 and a half, that is fantastic defense. What were you guys doing that gave you such a good defensive you performance? Know, I think we've been in really the, the whole week, Yeah, and I'd even include Wake Forest, Duke, Virginia, Carolina, Wake Forest, I think we've been in a better defensive mode. Scores haven't been as high, mm -hmm. and because they haven't been as high, we've been in position. But I think it's body position, and maybe we've been a little more connected defensively and talking better. This is a team that we've had to really get after to communicate better, mm -hmm. and I think they are trying to do that. Yeah, it's your point on the three. You held him to two of 23 shooting, and Love was the guy that hit the two in the game. I want to talk about J.J. Starling, because coming into this game, I thought the last few contests, offensively, he just didn't look like the guy we saw maybe the first couple months of the season. In the first half, he wasn't great either, I thought, offensively. But second half, he really turned it on. I thought he was catching the ball, just going right to the rim. What did you see from J.J. in the second half that encouraged you? You know, I, I give him a lot of credit. You know, he didn't have a good first half and didn't play much. Mm -hmm. 
and then was mature enough to bounce back and really be part of things and get some drives to the basket. When he can get some drives after some movement, it really, really helps us. Um, and, and, you know, we couldn't ask much more of him. Now he's dealing with a little bit of a knee issue, and we're trying to see if we can get him back for Pittsburgh. But, um, you know, he, I thought his bounce back for a second half was excellent. I'm looking forward to that in Greensboro. So you get a tough loss here at home. I just want to know what the message was. You tried to get, you know, set for a tough one on the road against Wake Forest. How were you trying to turn the pages you made the trip down there? You know, I, I've talked about them all being like individual games, fellas, and NSA tournament caliber teams. And, you know, any one of them we could win could jumpstart us mm -hmm. and really feel good about it. And I think we've looked at that kind of you know, here we go, individual games here. And we know the only thing we can do is get to Greensboro to have hope. It, it, we're not going to do anything here. So take them one game at a time. I also mentioned how the three games were on national TV, mm. how we come across, people are watching us. All of us are building a resume for next season. Yeah. All of us. <laughs> So how do we come across? Do we play together? And I think our group did that in those three national TV games. I want to ask you about being a little bit shorthanded down there. Of course, no Marcus Hammond, no J.J. Starling. It gave you a chance, I thought, to get some other guys some minutes. The one guy I have to hit on is just Robbie Carmody getting on the floor in a game. We've talked about him over the course of his career. I think back to when he was a freshman, so much promise and athleticism, just been snake bitten by injuries. But to get him on the floor in, in real minutes, what did that mean to you as a head coach? I, I, uh, I got a little emotional, mm. you know, and had goosebumps when he got in there and we knew we were down Hammond and we were down Starling and we felt he's the guy and he gets in there and gives us some minutes he's been practicing this is a young man we thought he'd never come back from these injuries and he really seriously thought about giving the game up he's got his love for the game back he's healthy he's playing and I think after he graduates He'll go somewhere and play basketball because he has eligibility. I think one of my favorite things, I've talked to Robbie a couple times on this show and elsewhere, he speaks so highly about kind of what you and the program have done for him to kind of keep him involved in maybe a circumstance where he didn't have to be kept involved. So it was just great to see him on the floor. One guy on the floor I do want to talk about before we take a break is Ben Allen Lubin. I mean, career day for him. To me, when he flashes, it's some of the most exciting flashes I see because it's just so unique. It's so different than everything else on the floor. What did you like for him in a career day? We need to keep Ben Allen Lubin at Notre Dame. <laughs> and um, he should stay because he's going to start and be an all ACC player next year. But I'll work on that after the season. In the meantime, I'm going to keep starting him and playing him 32 minutes so he's happy and fun. He, he, he has got so much to work with, Tony, as we've seen. He's battled some injuries that have knocked him out, and that's hurt us. Mm -hmm. But when he is playing well and giving us a low post body flying around like that, just a, a bright, bright future. Coach, appreciate it. We'll step aside and come back with more on the Mike Bray Show right after this. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com. It's now time for the second game breakdown segment. But Coach, we've already run through both games this week, and the reason I've left us some time is because this is the final show <laughs> that you'll be doing here inside Notre Dame men's basketball. And of course, back in the day, the Mike Bray Show, they're now kind of folded into one here. We sit down once a week and get to talk. So I wanted to kind of reflect on what's been a nice run for you here. Of course, we've talked about your coaching career, but let's talk about the show. Let's talk about the first time you sat down in this environment. You know, you look around the college basketball and football landscape, a lot of coaches have shows. So what do you remember about the first time you sat down and got a chance to talk about this job? Well, I was nervous and, you know, of course, Jack Nolan held my hand and I was wearing my mock turtleneck. That's back when I would dress with a coat and tie or a, a mock turtleneck and a coat and slacks. And we did it over at WNDU. That's where we tape it and you got to know all those production people. And Jack was a true pro. Mm -hmm. Jack was fabulous and we had a lot of fun doing it. And, and you're a true pro, by the way. It's been great working with you. Um, but, you know, great memories, laughing in between. When Jack would mess up an edit, he'd say, oh, coach is going to put me on the line and make me run sprints. <laughs> and he, he'd immediately fall on his sword. Um, and, and so, so r really good memories. And that's where we started with the production crew. And we haven't had many this year. Like, yo, we got a one and one week. Hey, we got a two and oh week. We got a two and oh week. It's a good week. Yeah. Oh, we got an oh two week, not a good week. So we would talk about that and a lot of, lot of great memories there. I want to ask you about Jack because he is uh, someone that's just so synonymous with, of course, Notre Dame athletics, but really this program. When I talk to Jack, 
he talks about men's basketball. You know, he might be yeah. associated with football in some cases, but he talked about this job. And I think he talks about this role uh, really as being some of his highlights of his career. When you think about working with Jack, you call him a true pro, but he's just a fun guy to be around. What do you remember about working with Jack? Well, he, he's, you mean, got it, got it, <laughs> right? I got to give him one of those, right? He, he, um, he was, he knew our team. Mm -hmm. He was passionate. He was a homer. Oh, he's unbelievable. We never lost. We either won or the refs got us. That sounds like Jack Nolan. I want to ask you then, too, about one of my memories, which is the other show, the old show, the Mike Bray Show, which is the weekly radio show. Yeah. They now kind of fold these into two. But I remember one of my first jobs here, working with Fighting Irish Media, was to come help with the production over there at O'Rourke's. And I'd watch you and Jack sit there. And to me, that's one of my flashbulb memories of seeing you guys in that environment, the live guests, yeah. the, the fans that would come out. I know it's kind of gone away the past because of the pandemic for, for, for different reasons, but what do you remember about those nights? Because I thought that was such a great environment. We could have some fans be around and it was just a great hour to hear you guys talk hoops. What I loved about that is we always had a player guest. Mm -hmm. And when you got to know, and I, I wouldn't have to talk, our guys are so well versed and personality and can communicate. Actually, a couple shows, I would send the seniors the last show. I wouldn't even go. Y'all do it. Yeah. And people would go, oh my God. And, and that's why you coach at Notre Dame, mm -hmm. the type of young men we've attracted. We had a nucleus of fans that would come. They were our diehards. They would come all the time and we'd pick up their tabs or send them a drink. And 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 Jack and I had, had a lot of fun with it. And we were able to pontificate on all kinds of tangents in college basketball. But the strength of it was when you had your players and they were able to get to be known, mm -hmm. woo, powerful. Coach, appreciate it. We'll step aside and come back with more on this week's edition on the Mike Bray Show right after this. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show, presented by Tyrac.com. It's now time for this week's edition of Irish Intel. Coaches, look at some plays from the Carolina sure. game first. He played really good basketball in this one, just came up a few plays short. Cormac Ryan's going to get a ball here on some great ball movement and ultimately knock down a shot. Just tell me how it happens. Well, you know, he is a catch-and-shoot guy, but he does a good job changing pace. Matt Zona does a real good job with a little bit of a dribble exchange screen, and we want him to rise up, even if he has a little window to shoot the basketball. And, but his pace was good there. He's done a better job at not playing as fast all the time and changing speeds. All right, Coach, baseline inbound set. I thought last year you guys had a ton of success on baseline out of bounds. This year maybe not as much, but I thought this did a great job of getting you guys into your half-court offense. Explain to me how starting on the baseline gets you a good look here. Well, we, you're right. We're not as good this year as last year. Last year we were lethal on out-of-bounds unders, but we get into a little single double option for Cormac. We love him coming off. He came off a little quick that time, but we understand, you know, we get some early movement. And, and I really think Trey Wirtz has had a pretty darn good year for us. We need Trey Wirtz mm -hmm. to be our point guard the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. All right, Coach, this might be a simple-looking play, but I want to highlight it because we talked about Van Allen Lubin in that last segment. I just think that when he's playing well, he's so fun to watch. Explain to me how Ven is able to score and what this means for his future going forward offensively. Well, an amazingly gifted young man who, when we can keep him healthy, he's key for us. Dane does a good job of not giving up on the post feed, and this is amazing footwork. Mm. Strong, square up, and one. That young man needs to stay at Notre Dame and be the ACC Player of the Year next year. Let me ask you this, just one follow-up on him. This is a move that I don't think he was making in November. I no. just think he's developed, he's, a, he's an offensive option now in a way he's not just going to the glass, he's catching, he's facing up, he's doing things offensively I don't think we saw two months ago. Agree, and you know, Anthony Solomon's done a lot with him, getting his footwork together. And, and again, what's been frustrating when we've lost him for segments with the ankle, then we don't have a low post threat, but then he's back and our guys love feeding him. Right. It's just that when he's not there, it's a big hole and uh, we need to keep him healthy the rest of the way and play him 33 minutes. We're joined by associate head coach, Anthony Solomon. Coach, I appreciate you sitting down. We're kind of reflecting on Coach Bray's career here. I know you're very close with Coach Bray. So before we get into your experience coaching with him, I want to ask you, tell me the first time you became familiar with Coach Bray. How'd you meet him? And what do you remember about maybe meeting him for the first time in that first conversation? Well, I would like to say uh, I go back to uh, the mid-90s, actually. Um, at that time, I was an assistant coach at the University of Virginia. And um, we overlapped. Uh, a bit there quickly, or he was at Duke, but then he goes on 
uh, to the University of Delaware. And uh, that was probably the first time we had a conversation. And actually it was about uh, a recruiting uh, situation. We had a young man that was leaving the University of Virginia that um, was looking to transfer. So uh, Mike was calling me to ask about uh, the young man and uh, his situation. And the young man happened to be from the, uni from the area of Maryland in the DC area. So we talked there. And I always uh, reflect back on that because that was probably the, the give and take in regards to uh, that young man ended up going to Delaware. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, a couple of times, um, we would talk. And he would always say, thanks for the insight and the information on the young man who actually uh, had some quality moments for him uh, at the University of Delaware. When you decided to ultimately join his staff for the first time, what went through your head? Why did you want to work for Mike Bray in the first place? Well, you know, I had been in the business uh, back in 2000. I had been in the business for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I was at a place in my career that um, I was coming off of two years of being a director of basketball operations because prior to that, I had been 10 years as an assistant coach. And um, when it happened in the middle of the summer, which was kind of <laughs> unusual, uh, when he was announced to be the head coach here uh, at the University of Notre Dame, uh, at that time, um, I was at the place where I was looking for a certain type of um, situation in terms of the right fit personally. Uh, being an assistant coach, I'd been in the business scene quite a bit early in my tenure, and um, I felt that Notre Dame uh, was a great fit for me personally as well as my family, alongside joining him who I knew previously from while he was at Duke and then when he got the head job at uh, Delaware. And I came here with the idea of it's a great university working with great people and it turned out to be fantastic. Um, we got started that year in 2000 and uh, it's been multiple stints, three that is, uh, to be actually, but a total of 13 years and um, I've enjoyed it very much. Coach, appreciate you taking the time. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com. It's now time to wrap up this week's show. Coach, this is our final show working with you, which means we're coming up on your final home game as the head coach of Notre Dame. I imagine it's a little bit surreal and hard to believe. We talked about your seniors and the guys will play their final game on that floor, but I'm asking you, what's going through your head as you get set for this final time coaching in Purcell Pavilion? Will you take some time to reflect going into that game? A lot of great memories of excitement in that building. I think back to the press conference 23 years ago we did in July and we opened it up to the public and uh, you know the the players that we've had come through. I think about 30 of our former players will be back for the game and a lot of friends. Just just good people, good memories. I, I am I am going to enjoy it and and not try to think about how good Pittsburgh is. I, I have been so blessed to be the coach here for 23 seasons and the people I've worked with um, there's a lot of memories in that building, and, and uh, I'm telling you, most of them are really good. Coach, I'm looking forward to watching that game on Wednesday. The last thing I have is just to thank you. I mean, I've yeah. appreciated your time over the last two years. We talked about how Jack Nolan sat in his seat for a long time, and I loved watching him, but it has been a great honor working with you on the road, working you, with you on this show. Uh, I'm looking forward to the games, obviously, in Greensboro, but this show, it has been a blast working with you the last well, two years. Well, you're a pro, mm -hmm. and I am really confident that our next coach has a heck of a guy to work with. Coach, appreciate it. Looking forward to still some more hoops with you, though, and a good running greens. Let's keep playing. That does it for the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireAct.com.